we'll deal with MASH again. M-A-S-H. I think there's a high demand for tutorials about MASH, which is a very new thing in Maya, 2017 and now 18, and so powerful that uh, we need to deal with it. And uh, we want to deal with it, and I'm learning basically every day. So this is what I'm going to show you today. It has to do with the sequence in which MASH nodes are ordered. And in this case, we only have three nodes. One is the distribute node, which is by default the way MASH networks start. And then we have a signal mode and an influence node. And uh, I will explain how th these three nodes work together here. So let's start with a new scene. With your Maya window open, press the Alt key and the key B together, Alt and B. It makes the viewport lighter, light gray now. Press it again. So it has that nice ramp from blue to black. Press it again, we have a black background. And if we press it, it again, we're back to the dark gray, the default uh, Maya viewport dark gray, which is quite fashionable these days. I think it will be quite different in five years. So let's go to black now. So let's create a disk for a change. It sits in the middle of the scene and we won't do anything to the disk, but give it a nice shader. And currently, of course, it's gray. Right mouse button, um, assign new material. And what we'll do is we'll assign a blin shader, for example, with a ramp. That's the important thing now. The ramp is going to be uh, uh, something which rules the design. I want to have a disk, a ring sort of uh, visualization here. So um, we need to see the ramp. That's why we click here. Here's the ramp. So it's going from black to white, from black to white. We can set the type from V-Ramp to Radial, which would be this, or to Circular, which would be this. That's what we want. And if we want the black part to be outside, we would move, uh, move it to this side. But uh, here we're quite fine, really, and if we move this closer, it will be quite a sharp edge. It looks like a ring now, with a little bit of shininess in the middle, and that's uh, what I want. Just a brief expedition into the circular ramp shader. Uh, it's not really, it doesn't matter for, for this purpose, it just looks good. Actually, we could make this a little bit more red, sorry about this. Like this. this is quite nice. Yeah, I like this. Well, now to mesh. Uh, let's use this tab here. And the first one you go from, basically, you can go from left to right. But uh, <laughs> here we just click on the left icon. And uh, mesh only accepts mesh objects. Well, we have to select the object. And then we get a mesh distribution here. So that's the default uh, 10 pieces, and that's in the MASH distribute node. Let's distribute it differently. Not linear from here to here, but in a grid. Um, distribution. We have three in the X and three in the Z axis and zero, uh, actually one in the y-axis. We could pump this up now. We can pile this up. Looks quite nice, really, but we'll leave it to one. And uh, But we'll make more on this side. And, yeah, we'll keep three here. Now, we don't want them to overlap. That's why we select the hidden original disk shape, which is... Here in the outliner we find it and we press the key R which is the scaling key so we scale the original and make it smaller like this now I want the three rows to be closer together 
And from now on, we'll check things through the top window. Here is the top window. We don't need the grid anymore for orientation or whatever. So it's uh, right here. Why don't we see the red? Because we didn't click here. OK. Um, so we go back to the mesh distribute node. And here we see the distances. This, for example, is the distance in this direction. Actually, we could use this to fill the window, which is a, a window size currently. And uh, this is the uh, orientation we want to have. So we have uh, lots of dots here. And let's add a few more like this. And the, the nice thing, one of the nice things about uh, mesh is that it handles hundreds of these points very elegantly and all in real time. Now we want to do something with the mesh uh, disks here. And what we want to do is put a signal node to it. A signal. Signal adds time animation to it. It acts like a signal. So let's click it and you already see there's a, something happening. Now we can run the animation and this is what we have. It's a, called a 4D noise which is actually happen, happening. If we want to have it in a more linear fashion we could go to the well fractional Brownian motion like this. And now we can play with the parameters. Here we have the position in x, meaning how strongly it stretches in the x-axis. That's the position in y, which is not of interest for us because we are looking at the whole scene from the y direction. But the posi position in z should stay 0 because I want to have this kind of stretching effect here. A rotation, well, we could have that, but does it really, do we like it? It makes a shininess. Yeah, we could do that because the disks um, rotate a little bit, but we can scale it. And this is the thing which I find more interesting now. The octaves is a noise about the general thing about the noise settings. So the persistence, how strongly it persists in uh, its original position and we here we have the trigonometry um, settings which uh, work according to a step size and uh, we can change the step amount here so the amount how this animation steps forward and the noise scale this makes it much more noisy noise in this context means uh, changing the size and the scale of the objects and maybe the position. So we can turn this down. We have multipliers here and we have a time scale so we can make it slower or faster. So now it goes a little bit slower which I think is a very nice effect. And of course we could render this. It renders nicely in Arnold. It renders in Maya as well. So just to do a brief rendering, for Arnold we need a general light. Let's take a sky dome light and now let's render it. It renders the perspective shape. We want to have the top shape. That's what it looks like. If we want a ba black background, of course, we need to introduce a black background in the um, color settings of the render camera. So we'll uh, delete the background sphere now and add another node to our network. We currently have a distribute node which is sitting here and a signal a node which sits here. In between is the time because this thing is animated now. And um, so the, the sequence is we first distribute our things so and so many in three rows and we added the mesh signal which we uh, manipulated quite a bit. Now let's go back to the mesh uh, main menu and add what is called an influence. 
we add an influence node and you already see that something is happening with our little disks now if we play the animation it's much more subtle now and it doesn't have to do very much with the animation we had before it's kind of uh, bigger ones in the middle and smaller dots at the end whereas before we had a changing size at, in on all sides the reason for it is this thing here it is the uh, influence node which we can move through the scene and that's what it makes you see when I move it to the right it makes the left dots very very small it makes the dots where it is the biggest and when we move it out of the scene very far out it just swipes them away it cleans the whole scene now I'm moving it back the same happens to the other side so that's quite a cool effect um, which is being used in many many animations now uh, but it doesn't respect very much the Brownian motion we had in our scene before and we can change this and this is how we change it we open this menu and here we see the distribution down here that's our start followed by the signal followed by the influence node which is here if we change the direct uh, the the sequence here by middle mouse moving this down here now we have the influence object working first and then the signal. Let's see what's coming out of this. We have a more a similar um, animation uh, as to the one we had initially, initially with a Brownian motion, with a Brownian scaling here. And the uh, influence node works a little bit in the background we can move it while the animation plays or while it doesn't play and if we move it in, uh, into the center of the scene and click on the influence node here we have the influence power now the power is set to 1 which makes the influence very weak and here it's very strong influence power 10 we could put in 100 I guess yes and it makes the influence very local now so only the little dots turn up let's go back to five say or actually to three or four so this is what we have um, we can move it all around and we need to animate it in order to have this nice effect we set a keyframe here for the influence node and we set another keyframe at the same position here and we set another keyframe at the same position in between we move the influence node all the way to the right set another key middle mouse drag it here means we don't actually move in the timeline but we just keep the scene scene frozen and I press another uh, uh, time S for set keyframe and here we have the animation now with a Brownian motion after the influence node which kinda works like a broom so that's what I wanted to tell you the order is important in uh, audio processing for example in uh, programs like Cubase or logic uh, it's crucial if you have the compressor before the reverb or the other way around for example you usually compress things first and then you add the reverb and it's a little bit uh, the same here or similar here uh, the influence node first and then the signal node in this case at least it works perfectly